purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at onpurposely.com. Are you a fan of jigsaw puzzles? I'm not, but my friend Sue is. She could do like one a week. Thankfully, this week on the Bible for Busy People, by the way, I'm Erica. Welcome. We're going to be tackling a different kind of jigsaw puzzle, joy. Joy is mysterious, right? You and I know that every day we can choose joy in our lives simply by getting our mind off the problem that we're just marinating on and gnawing on, if I'm honest sometimes, and moving our mind to the problem solver the God who can change any situation, the God who loves you and loves me absolutely unconditionally. All right. Our study actually begins in the Cheesecake Factory because there my husband and I were having a heart to heart over a split piece of coconut cream pie cheesecake. And we sat there and sipped coffee and I wound up just crying. I was having a little bit of an emotional moment. It was that good. No, it was that good. But I was overwhelmed with just all of the things that I need to accomplish. And I kept saying, well, what if this and what if that? And my husband looked at me straight in the eye and he said, Erica, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Worry isn't your strength. You need to stop worrying. I put my fork down and I've been thinking about it ever since. Let's see what the Bible has to say, because I think if we put some puzzle pieces together from different parts of God's word, we're going to see a very clear picture of the gift. Yes, the gift that God wants to give us every single day. We're going to start with that verse that Will quoted at the Cheesecake Factory. It comes from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10. And usually, I mean, you may have even seen this verse, the joy of the Lord is your strength on a coffee mug or in a beautiful meme. But today I would love to start with a little bit of background on who Nehemiah was. So let's go back to 444 BC. Okay. The Israelites have been exiled from their homeland for 70 years. They've been in Babylon and now they are returning in groups. And Nehemiah was a man who served the king of Persia. He actually had a secular position, but now he is leading the third group of Jewish people who are returning home. And their job was to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Pastor Chuck Swindoll is somebody great to follow on social media. He says Nehemiah's expertise in the king's court equipped him adequately for the political and physical reconstruction necessary for the remnant to survive. Isn't that cool? So we are going to begin Nehemiah's story today in the book that most people believe that he wrote, Nehemiah himself, in chapter 7, beginning in verse 73. In October, when the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled with a unified purpose at the square just inside the water gate. They asked Ezra, the scribe, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given for Israel to obey. So on October 8th, Ezra, the priest, brought the book of the law before the assembly, which included the men and women and all the children old enough to understand. He faced the square just inside the water gate from early morning until noon and read aloud to everyone who could understand. All the people listened closely to the book of the law. I want to pitch a tent here very briefly for a moment. What an emotional moment. Not only are God's people returning home to Jerusalem, their homeland, the Holy Land, but they are returning to their faith as well. It's almost like a recommitment. They're once again remembering everything that they believe. Verse four in Nehemiah chapter eight. Now, Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. How meaningful is that? To his right stood Mattatiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Masiah. To his left stood Padiah, Mishael, Malkajah, 
Hashem, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. I have no idea if I said any of those names correctly, but there you have it. They're kind of fun to say. Verse 5, now Ezra stood on the platform in full view of all the people. When they saw him open the book, they all rose to their feet. Then Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people chanted, Amen, Amen, as they lifted their hands. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The Levites, Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbatai, Hodiah, Messiah, Kalida, Azariah, Jazabad, Hanan, and Peliah then instructed the people in the law while everyone remained in their places. They read from the book of the law of God and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read, helping the people understand each passage. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were interpreting for the people said to them, Don't mourn or weep on such a day as this, for today is a sacred day before the Lord your God. For the people had all been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. And Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay, I've always wondered what that really meant, and I looked it up today. This is from Tony Ranke. He's an author and the host of John Piper's podcast, Ask Pastor John. He says the original Hebrew for joy is chedva, meaning joy or gladness. The root word for joy means to rejoice or to make glad in this context. In that same verse, The word strength is a Hebrew word meaning a place or means of safety, protection, refuge, or stronghold. The root word of strength means to be strong, to prevail, to make firm, to strengthen. The joy of the Lord is a constant gladness and cause to rejoice. And it stems from an inner strengthening from our relationship with him. When Jesus died for us, he restored us to a peace with God that cannot be undone. Your joy, here it comes. Thank you, Tony Ranke. Your joy rests on God's joy. That's why the joy of the Lord is your strength. Until next time, you are really loved. Thank you for making time for the Bible for Busy People today. If being part of this community is a blessing to you, it's super easy to share this podcast with someone you love. We're all about spreading the hope of Jesus like butter. So if you've got a moment to write a review, boy, we'd really appreciate that. Maybe you need a little prayer today or you're ready to take that next step with God. I invite you to check out our show notes. You're going to find lots of encouragement there. This podcast is one branch on a tree called Purposely, a podcast network designed with practical podcasts to help you find and thrive in God's purpose for your life. If you've got a pulse, you've got a purpose.